Amber's Reading Room, presented by Kitty. <laughs> uh, no, I'm having fun. I did thumb through this box a little bit, but that's because Lux took too long with the videos. But I'm having fun randomly drawing books from the box. So today's book is... I'm guessing that says Mickey Mouse's Picnic. I'm guessing. Ooh, that's going to be a lot of fun Photoshop. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room, where today we're looking at a little golden book that we think is called Mickey Mouse's Picnic. We can't really tell because the top is kind of torn off. Yeah, this um, I think is going to be the current record holder for the book with the most cosmetic damage so far. Well, we'll probably find out the actual title by opening up the book. Yes, but, you know, we do this whole blind reading thing, which is even more fun when they're books I haven't read, because there's no chance I can remember something about a book I haven't read. Also, it's a very nice cover. Very nice, very pleasant, very shaded. It gives a nice 3D look to everything. And very different from the last Disney book that we read. So I have a feeling that not just based on... Uh, the overall condition of this book, but looking at how the back cover is and at the drawing on the front cover, I think this one predates Mickey Mouse and Pluto Pup. Mm. Yes, Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse's Picnic. We guessed correctly. Story by Jane Werner. Illustrations by the Walt Disney Studio. Also generously donated by subscriber Sasami Chan. And the art style of the little picture here on the front page is different than the one on the outside. Well, they probably didn't have all the same animators because the Artists. illustrations. The Little Golden Books are prepared under the supervision of Mary Reed, PhD, formerly of Teachers College, Columbia University. This is an original story written and illustrated by the Walt Disney Studio, especially for Golden Books. I wanted to read that because it looked fun. Yeah. <laughs> and well, let's get this out of the way of the beginning. Copyright 1950. So yes, this one is older. Mm. I like the art style inside the book, though. That is so lively and well crafted. Mickey Mouse sang. Notice it says Mickey, not Ember. <laughs> what a beautiful day for a picnic. What a picnical day for a lark. We will frolic all day in the happiest way, and we won't get back home until dark. <laughs> it explains how happy he is. Mickey was feeling very happy as he skipped up the walk to Minnie Mouse's house. Ready, Minnie? He called. Pluto and Goofy and Daisy Duck and Clarabelle Cow were waiting in Mickey's car. What about Donald? Apparently not invited, or they haven't picked him up yet. The art is so nice. It's so soft. It's quite lovely. Already, Minnie smiled. I've packed us a nice big basket of lunch. She let Mickey peek inside. Wee! cried Mickey. What a picnic this will be. Also, I love how the edges of the pages are rounded. They're not sharp edges. Hmm. Oh, yeah. It's built into the book. Yeah, it's, it's not damage. It's actually design. Oh, boy. For Minnie had packed peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and cold meat sandwiches and deviled eggs and potato salad Radishes and onions and pink lemonade and a great big chocolate cake. That basket doesn't look big enough. <laughs> Let's go, said Mickey, and he picked up the basket and led Minnie out to the car. Wow. What's really interesting is the outfits do say, like, the era they're from, but they're also timeless. So it's kind of interesting. I really, just something about the art in this book, it's very lovely. Let's go, cried Goofy and Daisy and Clarabelle Cow. It seems strange to start off on a picnic without Donald Duck, said Mickey. Don't you think maybe we should ask him anyway? No, said everyone. <laughs> Ooh, poor Donald. Yes. You remember last time, Mickey, Minnie Mouse reminded him. We all decided not to take Donald on the next picnic. Because there always is trouble when Donald is along. Well, if you go by the current show, yeah, trouble kind of follows him because he's not that much of a luck. Yep. <laughs> well, all right, Mickey said. 
I guess we do have a car full anyway. So Mickey hopped into the driver's seat, and away they went. None of them saw a figure watching from behind the bushes, and when they were far down the road, none of them saw that figure come out from hiding and jump up and down in rage. Which is what Lux was guffawing at when I turned the page. Yep. Donald's leaping up doing his classic... <laughs> mm -hmm. As they're all cruising off in the jalopy. What a beautiful day for a picnic. What a picnical day for a lark. Everyone sang as Mickey Mouse drove merrily down the road to the picnic grounds. And it did start out to be a perfect day. First they went for a walk along the riverbank. Then they found a grassy spot beneath a tall shade tree. And they left Minnie's lunch basket there. Uh -oh. Then everyone went swimming in the old swimming hole. And how good that fresh, cool water felt. They swam and floated and played around and had a wonderful time. Now the swimming outfits do kind of date it a bit, but this type of style is coming more back in. Mm. You know, swimming suits that actually cover your body instead of leaving you exposed for sunburn. And as long as they're not as big and puffy and oy, as dangerous as some of the outfits were for women back then. Well, that's further back than the 1950s. You're, you're thinking more of the uh, Victorian era swimsuits that basically looked like Victorian clothing with 50 bajillion layers. And if they got wet, you would die because the sheer weight of the clothing would drag you underwater. Also, that swimming hole looks, like, it looks a little small to dive into, especially since Clarabelle is standing. So I wouldn't recommend that dive, Goofy. I'm hungry enough to eat that whole basket full of lunch myself, Mickey Mouse said after a while. We'll see that you don't, Mickey Mouse, Minnie laughed. But it is time to eat, I guess. So they all scrambled out of the water and hurried off to dress. Say, Goofy cried, look at this, will you? Goofy was holding up his pants. The legs were all tied in knots. So were his shirt sleeves. And Mickey's were too. I'm guessing this is... Donald's doing. Probably. You know, the person who wasn't invited along. Well, I never, said Clarabelle Cow. Some mischief maker must be around, Mickey said with a shake of his head. But Minnie had a worse thought than that. The lunch, she cried, and she ran up the bank to the shade of that big old tree. The lunch basket was gone. This is like, I'm just, I think it's because also the era it came from. The art is so well done. Ugh, groaned everyone. Not the lunch. Hurry into your clothes, everybody, Mickey cried. We'll soon find out about this. They struggled to undo the knots in their clothes. Then they dressed in a flash and were off on the hunt. All through the woods they hunted, under every bush and trailing vine. But not a sign of that lunch basket did they see. At last they came out on the road again, near where they had left Mickey's car. They were hot and tired and hungry and cross. I guess. Oi. Your lunch disappearing and you just went for a swim so you built up some hunger. And your clothing all in knots. And it was then that they met Donald Duck walking along the road all by himself. He had a fishing pole over one shoulder and a bundle hung from the end of the fishing pole. Donald was whistling as he walked along and he looked very pleased with himself. Well, hello, 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 he cried. Imagine meeting you folks out here. I just came for some fishing myself. Got tired of spending a lonely day at home. Shh. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah. Uh, hi, Donald. Nice picture. Very well detailed. I love the line work. And his expression, the classic I'm whistling, eyes over your shoulder. I am not doing anything wrong. <laughs> oh, er. Yes, said Mickey. He felt bad because they had left Donald behind. Where are you folks going? Donald asked. We are hunting for our lunch, Mickey said. For lunch? said Donald. Why, I have enough for us all in my bundle here. I will be glad to share it with my friends. Now everyone felt guilty. But they were hungry, so they said thank you. They would like to eat with Donald. I'm guessing Minnie's going to like recognize her cooking. Probably. Under the same big shady tree, Donald opened his bundle and spread out his lunch. 
It was delicious. There were peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and cold meat sandwiches and deviled eggs and potato salad, radishes and onions and pink lemonade and a great big chocolate cake. I don't need to flip back. That's the exact description in the exact order. Yep. I, I love the radishes and onions right there. Mm -hmm. Those are whole green onions. I'm trying to figure out. I'm pretty sure that's the peanut butter stack of peanut butter sandwiches, but that's the meat? That's the cold meat sandwiches. So they, they must have put them on red rounds or buns, and that is covered, so that must be the potato salad, because that's definitely the deviled eggs. A strange look came into Mickey and Minnie Mouse's eyes as they saw that picnic lunch. But they did not say a word. So they all sat down and ate and ate. This is delicious, Donald, said Clarabelle Cow. And it is nice of you too, Donald, Daisy Duck added, to share it with us. Sure is, said Goofy, reaching for another sandwich. Yes, Mickey admitted. I guess we misjudged you, Donald, old boy. <laughs> yeah... Yeah. A little, but not in the way you're implying, because Mickey and Minnie both know what the lunch looked like, so they are quite well aware that you are a thief. Hmm, said Minnie Mouse. Then she turned to Donald with her sweetest smile. Did you bring a knife for cutting the chocolate cake, Donald? She asked. Uh, uh, I had one somewhere, Donald said. He looked all around, but he could not find it. I fastened a knife to the bottom of the cake pan with paper tape, Minnie said, when I packed my picnic lunch today. Mickey turned the cake pan upside down. And there, sure enough, was a knife fastened to the bottom of the pan with paper tape. And on the knife handles were the letters M-M. Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse? Minnie Mouse, because it's hers. Well, said Mickey. Why, Donald, cried Daisy Duck. So that's where our lunch disappeared to, cried Clarabelle Cow. Donald dropped his eyes before their stony frowns. I'm sorry. Honest I am, he said. I won't ever do it again. And where is my lunch basket? Minnie asked. In the back of Mickey's car, Donald admitted. Everyone looked so solemn that Mickey had to laugh. Well, he said as he cut the cake and handed big slices around. It was a good lunch anyway, and we've all learned a lesson, I think. Donald won't snatch any lunch baskets soon, and we know it's better luck for a picnic to bring Donald. <laughs> also, don't give the dog chocolate cake. Everyone had to laugh then, and they all piled back into Mickey's car. They made room for Donald to sit in the empty lunch basket. In the lunch basket, okay. Uh, is that something along the lines of going to hell in a handbasket? Yeah, he's actually in the lunch basket, and they're lifting him into the car. Yeah, couldn't he just sit the lunch basket on his lap? Yeah. Then away they went toward town, singing merrily. We will frolic all day in the happiest way, and we won't get back home until dark. I just really love the illustrations in this book. They're so pleasant to look at. Uh-huh. I think they were done with a brush. I think that's what's going on. Could be, because it does seem very soft. Also, this one seems to have more of a lesson. Don't exclude your friends and don't prank your friends, especially when it comes to food. Also, why are they putting Donald in the basket? I don't know. I guess because it's funny or cute or something. Yeah, don't give chocolate cake to dogs. No. Don't give any type of cake to dogs. Except for those ones that come from the dog bakeries that are specially made for dogs. Mm. And another way you can tell this is an older golden book is to look at the back cover because it's even a different design from Mickey Mouse and Pluto Pup. They have what is probably all the little golden books for this time listed because there's no gaps in the number sequence like there were on the last one. It goes from 1 up to 97. Oh, slight gap in the Disney line though because it starts with number 3. Oh wow. D6, Uncle Remus. I bet that one's pretty impossible to find. Hmm. But again with all the little copyright marks... Walt Disney Books, Bank Street Books. Hmm. Who has that mark? Can't quite. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything for back. I'm not seeing that shape. Might be that one. Nope, that's a star, Walt Disney Productions. I don't know. I don't see a mark, but hey, the color kittens. You remember them? Mm hmm. What's really interesting is Pinocchio's the 
what would say the best rendered of the Disney characters. Everyone else is a little off model. I mean, just look at Donald. He almost looks like a chippy version. But it's also, if you look back at the older animation style, they've undergone a lot of changes over the years. I mean, just look at the replica Disney plush toys in Saving Mr. Banks. Mm -hmm. They look nothing like the modern characters. All right. This has been Mickey Mouse's Picnic. Story by Jane Werner. Illustrated by the Walt Disney Studio. Donated to Ember's Reading Room by Sasami-chan. Thank you. It's a really old one. Be interesting to see if we can track it down for a link. Yeah, and what condition it is used or if it's a new printing or anything. Because it's one of the saddest things. Books go out of print. They just stop making them. As if words on a page somehow expire. I think it's less about the page in the book expiring and more about the cost of manufacturing it based on how many people buy it. I know, but still. Yep. <laughs> Thanks again for listening.